Good morning. The word scapegoat has come into the English language through William Tyndale's translation of the Bible. He used it to describe the goat that was sent off into the wilderness on the Day of Atonement. In common parlance, a scapegoat has come to refer to someone who is blamed for the mistakes of others. The practice of scapegoating is one that is familiar to us. We recognise it instantly in our politicians. No matter how strong the evidence that they have made a mistake, they are skilled at passing the buck. If only previous governments hadn't acted the way they did. If only the other parties hadn't adopted such and such a stance. We also find scapegoating every week with sports coaches after a defeat. The referee, or now VAR, is the most common fall guy. In post-match interviews we're used to comments like The decisions didn't go our way today. The officials didn't help us. Or simply, we didn't get the rub of the green out there. In a world where success matters, it's often expedient to deflect the blame onto others. But if we are honest, we too are guilty of scapegoating in our personal relationships. If we're running late, it's always someone else's fault. If we have misunderstood something, it's because someone else wasn't clear. If we lose our temper or if we've been unkind, it was someone else's attitude which caused us to react the way we did. We scapegoat because it means we don't have to confront the feelings in our own lives. We prefer the image of ourselves as rational and fair-minded. We would rather make excuses than admit our mistakes, even if it means being unfair to others. In John's Gospel, we learn that the high priest Caiaphas thought that it was better for Jesus to die rather than for the whole nation to incur the wrath of the Romans. The authorities made a calculation to kill an innocent man rather than face up to the challenge that Jesus brought to their traditions and practices. The preservation of their identity was more important than anything else. How different the way of Jesus. He doesn't conform to the standards of this world. He willingly becomes a scapegoat rather than justify himself. He exposes the world with all its jealousy, hatred and self-preservation. His is a self-giving love which is prepared to suffer on behalf of others. What an example he calls us to follow. We pray. Lord Jesus, we acknowledge that so often we don't want to take responsibility for our actions. We would rather blame others, often unfairly, in order to protect the flawless image that we like to project. Make us aware of our own violent attitudes and our attempts to get ourselves off the hook. As we consider the example of Jesus this Easter, show us a better way to live. Help us to acknowledge our sins and to say sorry when we hurt others. Help us to amend our ways and to walk in the countercultural way of Jesus. Amen.